You know, for a character as old and as iconic as Mario, there aren't a lot of good action figures of him out there. For whatever reason, there just aren't a lot of fully posable Mario figures. Sure, plenty of Mario figures exist, but most of them are basically just lightly posable figurines. Take the Popco Mario figures, for example. Don't get me wrong, these are excellent figures, but they really lack in terms of articulation. Sure, they have articulation, but for the most part you can only move their heads and arms. For the record, some of them can move their legs, but overall they're very limited in the amount of poses they can achieve. Nowadays, this isn't much of an issue anymore. Figures like the SH Figure Arts line and of course Jack Specific's World and Nintendo line have given us a great selection of posable Mario action figures. But for the longest time that simply didn't exist, or at least wasn't common. That is, outside of a single line. A line from the late 90s that defined what a great Mario action figure could be. Of course, I'm talking about the Toy Biz Mario Kart 64 action figures. These figures, released between 1999 and 2000, were some of the first fully realized Mario action figures. Not only did they cover a vast amount of characters, but they were also fully detailed and fully articulated. They have since become iconic in the Mario figure community, so let's talk about them. Welcome to a look back at the Toy Biz Mario Kart 64 action figures. Before we start talking about the figures, we should talk about the company that made them, Toy Biz. Now, the history of Toy Biz is pretty complicated, so I'll only focus on the parts that really matter to this line. Toy Biz was a company that focused on making tons of figures from a variety of licenses. One of their most popular lines was no doubt their Video Game Superstars line. This is the line the Mario Kart 64 figures are a part of. The line basically took many of the most popular video games at the time, and produced highly articulated well-made action figures of them. Surprisingly, Toy Biz managed to acquire a lot of Nintendo licenses, such as The Legend of Zelda, Diddy Kong Racing, and of course, Mario Kart 64. It's interesting to note the release year of this line, 1999 and 2000. That's three to four years after Mario Kart 64 was released. It's anyone's guess as to why Toy Biz went with the Mario Kart 64 license. But when you think about it, outside of just the standard Mario line, it really was the best option for them. The line consists of two waves, totaling seven figures. Wave 1, which was released somewhere in 1999, contained Mario, Yoshi, and Bowser, while Wave 2, which was released in 2000, contained Luigi, Wario, Donkey Kong, and a Ghost variant re-release of Mario. Unfortunately, no Peach or Toad figures were ever released in this line, so we never got the full roster from the game. One of the most notable things about these figures are the accessories they come with. Being based off of Mario Kart 64, you didn't just get a standalone action figure. The figures also came with a fully detailed cart, as well as an item found in game. Seriously, as great as the base figures are, the carts and items really tie this line together. Toy Biz didn't cheap out on the accessories either. It looks like nearly as much care that went into the figures also went into the extras. Despite their somewhat outdated appearance, and admittedly lacking articulation by today's standards, these figures continue to be praised as one of the best Mario figure sets out there. So, let's find out just how much truth that statement holds. Here's the Mario in this set. Standing up, this Mario looks just like Mario did in Mario Kart 64. He's spot onto the artwork from the game and is a perfect representation of how Mario looked back then. The figure is around 4 inches tall and has a total of 7 articulation points. Mario can move his head 360 degrees around, he has ball jointed arms, his legs can move forwards and backwards, and you can twist his wrists. This doesn't give the figure that much posing options, but it gets the job done and allows Mario to do quite a lot. He can sit in this cart, he can show emotion, you can't get him into too many posing options, but for a figure of this size, price, and age, this is more than fine. Let's talk about this guy's sculpt. This set as a whole can be kind of divisive. Some people love them, some people don't. Sure, the characters look great, but they aren't exactly one-to-one -one with how we'd expect them to look. Toy Biz certainly took some creative liberties when making these figures, whether or not that's a good thing is up to you. I personally like Mario Sculpt. It's a really nice representation of the character, and looks pretty unique when compared to other Mario figures out there. Though again, whether or not that's a good thing is up to you, as there's no denying that this figure isn't completely spot on to Mario, and I could see that being a negative to some. His head and face are pretty much what you'd expect, though there is a seam that runs down his nose, which is pretty noticeable. There are a few seams on this figure, but that's to be expected. I'm usually more of a fan of figures that depict Mario with a closed mouth, but I think the open mouth works here. Mario's expression as a whole is pretty interesting. 
I'm pretty sure he's supposed to look happy, but he almost looks angry with the way his eyebrows are positioned. Gives him a very determined look, which is actually pretty fitting to Mario Kart. His M emblem is indented. Almost none of the details on this figure are just painted on, they almost all have some sort of indentation to them. The paint on this figure is really well done. Besides a few areas where the paint can look a bit messy, it's all good. Mario's leg articulation does cut into his sculpt, though honestly that's a fair trade-off. Most Mario figures, such as Jack Specific's Mario, really lack in terms of leg articulation. However, with this sacrifice sculpt, Mario can move his legs forwards and backwards, though not too far backwards. And this is important as it allows Mario to sit in his cart, and his open hands allow him to hold his steering wheel and be posed in some pretty dynamic poses. Mario's shoes are a solid brown color but are well sculpted. They do lack sole details, but since this figure will be standing most of the time, that's not that big of an issue. Usually with merchandise, you can tell what time frame it came from, and with this figure, I instantly think, yeah, that's Nintendo 64 era Mario. It's so cool to have this design made into an action figure, as I highly doubt we'll see something that looks like this come out today. Of course, you didn't just get the figures when you bought these. Despite reportedly being priced at less than $10, these figures were packed with tons of cool accessories. With Mario, you get his cart, as well as a green shell. Mario's cart has way more detail than you'd expect. It's a red pipe frame styled cart, and has all of the facets and details needed. It even has a seatbelt so the figures can't fall out of the cart. You can even detach the seatbelts and everything. And that's especially important as the carts have a pullback motorized feature. It works pretty well and is a great addition to the figure. However, since some of these carts are pretty old and well used, the pullback feature on some of them doesn't work that well anymore, or at all, but that's to be expected. The steering wheel also turns, and the pedals can move forwards and backwards. There's so much to these figures that they really did not need to include, but they did, and that's so cool. The carts also have a small hole, either in the front or the back, which is used for another one of the set's gimmicks. That gimmick being that you can launch the included items out of the carts. In Mario's case, it's a Koopa shell. The Koopa shell sculpt-wise looks exactly like it does in the game. However, paint-wise, it's a bit off. It should have more of a peach color for its underside, but instead it's colored green. However, it does have the grooves that it should, so that's good. You'll also notice that the shell has a long rod sticking out of the back of it. You simply insert the item into the hole on the cart, and when you release the cart after winding up its pullback feature, the shell or any other compatible item that comes with the figures gets launched. As far as I know, all the items that come with the characters are interchangeable, so if you want to launch Yoshi's Bananas with Mario's cart, I'm pretty sure you can do that. This Mario is a solid figure. The sculpt is great. It really does the character and the game justice. And the cart and item are extremely well done for what are essentially extra additions. If the line wasn't Mario Kart based, and the cart and item weren't included, I still would highly praise the base figure as it's really well made, but the extras just add that much more to the whole set. As for rarity, well, that's where things get a bit interesting. Unlike many sets, all of the figures in this set more or less have the same rarity to them. Because of that, I'll only be mentioning the rarity of this set once so I don't get too repetitive. You can pick these figures up relatively easy. Well, loose that is. If you just want the figures and their accessories, and don't care about them coming new in the packaging, then they'll only cost you around $20 to $30, possibly more or less given their condition. The prices really spike when taking into consideration getting the figures mint. Acquiring these figures mint on card, with the packaging completely new and pristine, is not an easy task. Or at least not a cheap task. These were very popular toys. People back in the day probably didn't take into consideration that their Mario toy may be worth something someday. Lots of people bought these toys and opened them up, which is perfectly understandable. I personally collect figures loose, and when it comes to older figures, don't really care about getting them new in the box. But I do know that a lot of collectors do try to get them as mint as possible, so there's a pretty large demand for these figures new. Especially considering as time goes on, more and more of these will be opened, only making the boxed ones even more scarce. Because of all of that, a mint one can run you around $50 to $60, possibly more, though I have seen them go for less. Speaking of packaging, let's talk about the boxes these figures came in. The boxes to this set are absolutely outstanding. They follow a pattern seen on other video game superstars lines, but they have that distinct and iconic Mario Kart 64 artwork and styling. The figures came in large, carded bubble packaging. The top of the packaging displays the Video Game Superstars line logo, saying Video Game Superstars presents Mario Kart 64. The box features a huge Mario Kart 64 logo atop the classic artwork from the game. The whole styling of the box is based off of and is made to work with that artwork. Of course, the box has copyright information, and has the Nintendo logo above the Mario Kart 64 logo, as well as the Toy Biz logo at the bottom right-hand corner. 
The bubble holds and displays the figures and their accessories well. It's very easy to look at the included items at different angles, which is always a good thing with figures, as it makes it easy to inspect them for imperfections and stuff like that. The paper insert towards the bottom of the box displays character artwork of the included figure, as well as the character's name, and text that tells you that the card does have the motorized pullback feature, as well as what the included item is. The box has a lot of small details that most people probably wouldn't even notice. For example, behind the figures and accessories you can see a fully detailed racetrack. The back of the box shows a lot more character-specific info. It shows artwork of the character, as well as a full character description. There are also instructions on how to use the cart and accessory. And finally, there's a small advertisement for the other figures in the set. The packaging does vary a bit between Wave 1 and Wave 2, but for the most part it's the same. So yeah, all in all, very nice packaging. No complaints here. But that's pretty much all there is to say on it. So, let's move on to the next figure in the set. Here is the next figure in Wave 1, Yoshi. Yoshi's articulation is basically what you'd expect. You can move his head, though it is somewhat limited by his mouth. His legs can move back and forth, though just like Mario they cut into his sculpt a bit. The way they handled Yoshi's wrist articulation is interesting. The figures in this set all have articulated wrists. However, since Yoshi's are pretty thin, Toybiz put the joint closer to his elbow. This is actually a really good design choice, as if they put it closer to his hand, it probably could have easily been broken. Yoshi's pain for the most part is pretty well applied. There are some areas that can have some spray over, such as his shoes, but for the most part the paint seems to stay where it should. Yoshi's sculpt looks really nice. His head is very round and well detailed. His nose is very large, but unfortunately again has a somewhat noticeable seam running down it. His eyes look great and help give this figure expression, and Yoshi has his mouth opened, showing his tongue just like this artwork. And that artwork is the one used on Yoshi's box, so it's probably based off of it. I actually really like Yoshi's expression. It's simple, but is way better than just a stock blank expression. One thing that this set nails is giving the characters a sense of personality. Of course, I've already talked about how Mario looks determined, but Yoshi characteristically looks like he's just having fun, Donkey Kong looks angry, and Wario... well... Yeah, you get the point. They nailed these characters. Yoshi has his spikes on the back of his head. Looking at Yoshi's head from the side here really shows how good it looks. This is just a great looking Yoshi. His body is more of what you'd expect. It's round and curved, and he has his shell on his back, which is raised and well detailed. Yoshi's hands aren't identical to each other. One is in more of a gripping pose while the other is opened, again like this artwork. Yoshi's proportions are pretty accurate. His head and body look proportionate to each other. However, his shoes are really huge. Though, looking at Yoshi art from that time, that was accurate, though it does look kinda strange compared to the Yoshi we know today. Overall though, the sculpt and articulation on Yoshi is really excellent. Yoshi's cart is the same as Mario's, except it's a light green color. All of the figures in this set pretty much come with the same identical cart, the only difference being the positioning of the hole for the item and the character's specific color. Yoshi's accessory is a bit uncharacteristic. It's a string of bananas. One cool thing with these though is that each individual banana can be separated from each other. Plus, there's no limit on how many you can link together, so if you had a bunch of these, you could make a huge chain of bananas. Interesting how they came in bunches of six, as that's not quite like the game. I'm not sure why they came with Yoshi, but they're nice. In any toy line, it's always good to have a selection of antagonists to balance out the good guys, and the ratio is pretty good in this set. And of course, you can't have a Mario set without having the main bad guy himself, Bowser. Okay, I'm just gonna say it, this figure flat out looks awesome. His detailed scales, his great expression, his incredible shell, honestly this is one of my favorite Bowser figures ever. Lots of Bowser figures have a pretty flat paint job. I mean, that's how Bowser appears in most games. But this Bowser figure takes a completely realistic approach to his details. For example, all of his scales are individually detailed, which not only looks great but also gives the figure some texture. Even his eyes are bloodshot. It's insane the level of detail that they could put onto this figure. He's also quite large. Mario's around 4 inches while Bowser is more around 5 inches. The way they handled Bowser's articulation was pretty well done too. His arms are on ball joints so they can move any way you want, he can swivel at his wrists, and his legs can move similarly to the other figures, and of course he can move at his head. It's great that even though Bowser is large and has tons of details, nothing had to be sacrificed. Bowser comes with an orange-red colored cart. Surprisingly, he can still fit into it very well, despite being larger than the other figures. 
Bowser came with not one, but two blue shells. A fitting item for the character, and they look pretty great too. The blue shells were introduced in Mario Kart 64, and their designs were less refined compared to what we see today. And that early design is represented on these. This makes them really stand out. They lack wings, and their spikes stick out a lot more. To sum it up, this is a Bowser figure unlike any other. It's simply an impressive toy, and is a testament to how high quality this line really was. Let's start Wave 2 off with, who else? Luigi. You'll notice that Luigi, well, doesn't really look like Luigi here. Well, at least not by today's Luigi standards. He's roughly the same height as Mario, and while his mustache is the correct shape, his face isn't long. This isn't because Toy Biz wasn't accurate, it's just that this figure was based off of the models and artwork from before Luigi got all of the characteristics we know him for. Back then, he looked a lot more like Mario, he looked like this figure. And really, that makes this figure even cooler. It's a time capsule of a time before Luigi really got much of an identity. The figure itself, given the time period, looks very accurate. It's pretty much more of the same with what we saw with Mario. For the most part, the two share a very similar sculpt. Well, outside of their faces, of course. Mario has an intense looking face while Luigi looks like he's just having the time of his life. I think it suits the two figures very well. He has a happy looking expression on his face. And sure, it may make him look a bit goofy, but I think it works. Also, okay, his mustache is really big. I don't know why, but it's really huge. Not saying that's a bad thing, but it looks kinda weird because of that. Really, the rest of his sculpt, like his body, is essentially the same as Mario. Pretty much what I said for Mario's body applies to Luigi. His colors and paint are nice, he has that distinct Luigi green that we all know and love, however, again differing from modern Luigi, you can see that he doesn't have the dark blue overalls that he does today. Instead, they have more of a standard blue color to them. Luigi's cart has a green color to it, and Luigi's accessory is a mushroom. The mushroom itself is kind of interesting. Not only can it be launched from the cart, which is, you know, not a thing you can do in the game, but it also looks different compared to what the mushroom looks like today. Its head is more squared, its eyes are small, and it has some additional oddly placed spots on the top. It's always important to have a mushroom included in a Mario action figure line, so it's good that this was included. Though you'd think they'd include it with Mario. Maybe they wanted Luigi to be a little more special. Another excellent addition to the line. Even though he's really similar to Mario and shares a lot of Mario sculpt, what is different about him looks great. It's time to look at an absolute highlight in the set, Wario. For years, this figure has always stuck with me. Before I even knew what this set was, I saw this figure and it was instantly a classic in my eyes. Let's start with what draws you in the most about this figure, his face. Oh man, Wario's head is quite something. Wario's face looks actually really off. I don't know, but I think it's his paint. When you stand him next to Mario or Luigi, you can really tell something's up here. He almost looks pale. However, he does have some shading which does help. His expression is also kinda, I don't know, off-putting? Though I do like it because I think it works well with Wario's character, he has sort of a dead stare to him which is a bit unsettling. Though his nose is well done, as is his mustache, and his eyes look great. Maybe if his mouth showed a bit more of an expression, he'd look fine. His ears are correctly pointed, and his hair is as well done as Mario and Luigi's. His hat is proportionate to his head, and is clearly a different mold than Mario and Luigi's, which is accurate. His body is very round, being accurate to his design. His overalls are well sculpted, and it all looks pretty nice. Though I feel like his overalls are a bit too light in color. They almost appear pink when they should be purple. Just compare it to his cart, which is purple, and you can really tell the differences in the shade. Wario's arms are very straight and stocky. They aren't bent or posed like some of the other characters, giving Wario a rigid look, fitting to his character. His hands appear to both be the same sculpt, with him having gripping hands. His gloves also have the correct W logo. Wario's legs can move just like the other figures, though this time around they don't really cut into his sculpt. I suppose Wario's more rounded features allow for his joints to appear more flush, so that's good. And of course, he has his genie-like shoes. While they are small, and thus it appears that he would have trouble standing, he actually doesn't. Really, if it wasn't for the face, the figure wouldn't have many issues. And even then, the face can be seen as a positive given how ridiculous it looks. Wario really stands as a good example of how this set isn't exactly that accurate to the characters, but that makes them unique and pretty cool looking all things considered. Wario looks dumb, but I wouldn't have it any other way. 
Wario came with a purple pipe frame cart, as well as two red shells. They're basically the same as Mario's green shell with different paint, and this time around their undersides are painted correctly. A truly classic Wario figure. If you can get around Wario's interesting details, then this is a great figure. Honestly, one of my favorites in the set. The next character we'll be taking a look at today is the King of Kongs himself, Donkey Kong. At first, I didn't really like this figure all that much. His expression and his proportions just looked off to me, but over time I've grown to really like the figure. Sure, yeah, he definitely looks strange, but I think he has a lot of charm. First thing to mention is that this guy, like Bowser, is pretty large. Yet, again like Bowser, he has a lot of detail. It's interesting how Toy Biz could make the larger characters still have tons of detail. Usually due to budget reasons, that's not the case. Anyway, Donkey Kong looks great. His expression is the one thing that I think made me not really like him at first. From some, if not all angles, he looks kinda dumb. However, when you think about it, that is pretty fitting for Donkey Kong, and from some angles, it does look really good. Outside of that though, he's extremely well done. Just like Bowser, he has a lot of detail and shading, it just all looks so great. For example, here's the back of Donkey Kong's tie. You can see that it actually has detail for where the two end parts of the tie connect. Who would even think to include a detail like that in a figure? That's such a small detail, but it's so impressive that it was included. The designers of these figures really did some incredible work. Donkey Kong's articulation is pretty standout. He has a lot more articulation than most of the figures in the set. He can move at his neck, allowing his head to move 360 degrees. His arms and legs, though, are very articulated. Not only does he have a full range of movement in his arms and legs, but he also has some elbow and knee joints that allow for some great posing. Even his feet have a joint that allows them to move forwards and backwards. Even his tie can swivel. They really went all out on this figure. One really interesting thing about this figure is that, well, we could have gotten a different figure entirely in the place of Donkey Kong. What am I talking about? Well, I'm sure you guys have seen this already, but in early footage of Mario Kart 64, then under the name Super Mario Kart R, Magikoopa was seen in place of Donkey Kong. Could you imagine a Magikoopa figure being in the set instead of Donkey Kong? But I think Donkey Kong was definitely the greater option. Donkey Kong's accessory is, what else, bananas. Yeah, that's great, but they're identical to the ones that came with Yoshi. Yeah, okay, there's no way they could have made this figure and not have given him bananas, but it does make you wonder why Yoshi had them to begin with. Obviously, it saved Toy Biz the cost of not having to make another accessory, but it is kinda strange. Despite what I first thought about this figure, now that I'm really taking a good look at it, it's really impressive. He's way more detailed than he needs to be, he has standout articulation, and nearly everything about him is really well executed. I'd like to remind you that these figures retailed for around $10 or under. I have no idea how Toy Biz managed that. Here's the last figure we'll be looking at today. It's honestly kind of underwhelming, but we've gotta cover it. It's a ghost variant of Mario. Well, that's what it's called at least. In actuality, it's just the Mario figure with its shirt molded out of translucent red plastic. Lazy? Yeah, kinda, but hey, all the other figures in this set are so great, a variant is pretty understandable. One variant doesn't really ruin anything in my eyes. If anything, it just makes the line more interesting. And hey, after making something like Bowser, Toy Biz deserved a cheap variant. The sculpt of Ghost Mario is identical to the first wave release of Mario. No expression changes, no stance changes, the only difference is the translucent shirt. But wait, the cart is made out of translucent plastic too. That's pretty cool looking, though it doesn't make much sense in the context of the game. So, the Mario and his cart are just retoolings of the original release. But the one thing that is original with this release is his item. It's a Boo. I think this is why he's called Ghost Mario in the first place. The Boo looks nice, its face is well detailed, and it looks appropriately spooky. So besides his accessory, there's not a whole lot to say about this guy. He's a creative reference to the game, but it's just a variant of Mario. But trust me, even though we've already covered all the figures, we still have a lot to talk about. While we've covered the main figures, there's still a decent amount of stuff to go over with this set. Let's go back and talk a bit more about this set's history. So, these figures were released in 1999 and 2000, and like many toy lines, were heavily promoted before they were released. And no place is better at drumming up hype for figure releases than Toy Fair. Ah yes, 
Toy Fair. It's the place where companies show off their products, sometimes including early test prototypes of their products, more on that later, to get everyone hyped for their release. And thankfully, Toy Biz brought these Mario figures to both the 1999 and the 2000 Toy Fair. And even more thankfully, we still have archived pictures and information regarding their appearances at the events. So, let's take a look at them. For the most part, at both Toy Fairs, the figures look pretty close to the final releases. So, why even bring them up? Well, at the two Toy Fairs, Toy Biz displayed larger scale versions of the figures. They were around twice as large as the released figures. All of the figures in the line seem to have larger scale versions of them. Were these intended to be released? Were they made simply for display? We may never know for sure. And that's basically it. Well, it would have been if not for this eBay listing that appeared in late summer of 2015. It was a listing by one of the people who worked on the line, and they were selling the larger scale version of Mario. Somehow, the figure only sold for around $60. But the question is, who bought it? Well, we actually do know who bought it. Fellow collector L Supersonic Q purchased this figure, and made a detailed video showcasing it. I'll link the full video in the description below. I really can't say much about these larger prototypes outside of the fact that they exist, cause we really don't know much about them, but that alone is really interesting. Unfortunately, according to L Supersonic Q, the seller said that this was the last Mario Kart prototype figure that he had, so the whereabouts of the rest of the larger figures remains a mystery, if they even exist anymore at all. Not only does this mean that the rest of the prototypes are technically lost, but it also means that the set was split up. And considering how special of an item these are, that's a shame. Heck, Mario didn't even have his item or cart. We don't even know if this Mario is even the same one that was at Toy Fair. There's just so much mystery to these larger figures, and chances are we're probably never gonna get answers. However, the fact that the larger Mario still exists today gives me hope that the others are out there somewhere. Maybe in a private collection, maybe owned by someone who worked on the line. Who knows, but they've gotta be out there somewhere, and if we're lucky, maybe another one will show up someday. This set is quite the product of its time. The almost off-model sculpts of the characters, coupled with the amazing extras, makes this set incredibly cool. You do have to wonder what could have been, though. Of course, I've already mentioned the whole Magic Koopa could have gone on a figure ordeal, and hey, if we're talking about rumored characters, why no Marty the Green Thwomp figure? You guys remember Marty. He was a heavily rumored playable character in Mario Kart 64. You know the Green Thwomp in Bowser's Castle? Yeah, that's Marty. People actually thought you could unlock and play as him in the game. And uh, maybe I did too, but let's not talk about that. It's pretty ridiculous looking back, but come on Toy Biz, you could have made a Marty figure. Jokes aside, it really is too bad that Peach and Toad didn't get figures. It would have been really interesting to see Toy Biz's takes on the characters given the rest of the set. We'll probably never know the true reason as to why they didn't make it into the line, but this set will never feel as complete as it should have without them. Besides Peach and Toad not being included, this set is basically all you could want from a Mario Kart toy line. There have been countless Mario Kart figures over the years, but a ton of them are just the figures molded into the carts, or they're too small, etc, etc. This really is the only Mario Kart set to have more to it than simply being a display item or having a pullback feature. While yes, these figures can function as that, they have a lot more to them. Even with Jack Specific now releasing new fully postable Mario figures, these figures still have a lot of charm to them, and I don't think that can be quite replicated in another set. It's crazy that a set that people continue to call the best set of Mario figures to this day came out so long ago, but that just shows how great these figures are, and I think they fully deserve it. 